Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to another episode of the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. What a crazy week it's been in tech this week. I mean, only last year, Android fans were up in arms at Apple having the nerve and audacity to remove the much-loved headphone socket. And 12 months later, Google is now doing the same thing with their Pixel 2 phone. But I have to ask myself, is there really any room for wires in the 21st century? Or is it all just a bunch of first world problems? I'll leave that one up to you all to decide, but why don't you let me know by tweeting me at Neil C. Hughes. But on with today's show, and we have a corker for you today, a genuine inspirational tech journey. Brian Leach is an entrepreneur that turned his back on law and became the founder of iBotter, which is located in Denver. But I don't want to let out any spoilers, so let me beam your ears all the way to Denver so we can speak with Brian Leach, founder of iBotter. So, a massive warm welcome to the show, Brian. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure thing. I'm Brian Leach. I'm the founder and CEO of Ibotta. Ibotta is one of the most frequently used mobile shopping apps in the United States. Now, Ibotta was launched in Denver back in 2012, I believe. And now with more, hundred, more than 400 employees, 20 million downloads, nearly 100 million in funding and partnerships with Target, Walmart and 1500 other brands. But you're also focused on getting millennials to stop shopping bricks and mortar again and help stop that wave of retailers closing in physical locations. But for anyone that is new to your inspirational journey, can you advise exactly what iBotta is and what makes it so unique? Sure. So it's a free app that you download onto your smartphone or tablet. You create an account and then essentially we give you a series of things that you can buy out in a, in a regular shop, a grocery store. Uh, a package store if you're buying a bottle of wine or a six pack of beer. You can use it when you're going shopping for your pets. It, it works kind of everywhere in the physical retail world. And essentially you decide which products you wanna buy and then you take a picture of your receipt with your phone or you pay with your loyalty card and then we instantly give you a cash back reward. So it's a, a bit like a 21st century replacement for coupons or rebates with an instant cash reward that you can then take out and put onto a gift card or onto your bank account via PayPal or via Venmo. And these days, uh, Neil, you can actually use it for all your online purchases as well. So if you are hailing a ride on Uber, if you are ordering food delivered to your place of work or home, if you are shopping on Amazon or even booking your travel on booking.com or hotels.com, you can start with Ibotta and we will link you into those other uh, online shopping experiences and give you instant cash back as soon as you purchase in another app. Now, Ibotta is already incredibly successful, but I want to take you right back, Brian, to where this all began, because I believe that you graduated from Harvard, went to Oxford on a Marshall scholarship, and then you got your law degree from Yale back in 2005. But this is where things get really interesting, because despite your life appearing to be destined for that path towards law, something changed. And after a year clerking for US Supreme Court Justice Dave Souter and joining a Denver law firm, you quit law after you saw someone on an airplane taking pictures of business cards with a phone. I mean, it's a great story, but can you just uh, tell me about that moment and the reasons why you felt you had to quit? Sure. I was happy in many ways as a lawyer. I got to handle international contract disputes in arbitrations in places like London and Singapore and all around the world. But I found that the most exciting bits of that were building my international arbitration practice, building my business. When it came down to actually practicing law and you know, handling the, the research and writing, I was finding it not as inspiring. And I wanted to be part of a small team of folks that were going to build something and create something that had never existed before. And so I, I was feeling a bit restless when I was coming back from this trip from a conference in Rio de Janeiro. And I saw someone using their phone to take a picture of his business cards so he could keep track of who he'd he'd just met at the conference. And I thought about the disruptive power of mobile technology and how you could theoretically take a picture of your receipt from the shop and have instant access to kind of all the things you bought. And hence, you know, with my American accent, I bought a, you know, (laughs) all the things I bought came into my mind. And 
I just couldn't shake it. It just became a project that I was curious, you know, what, what is the current way of delivering uh, promotions and coupons and how could we have a more direct connection between the consumer packaged goods company, the brand itself, like Coca-Cola, for example, and the end consumer. So we don't have to take these little paper chits into the store. And the more I learned, the more I realized that there was a lot of frustration with the current approaches and a lot of money being spent on those poor tactics. And uh, at some point, the fear of failing at this new venture uh, was outweighed by just the, the sense of regret I knew I would feel if I didn't give it a shot. Do you ever look back at that pivotal moment and realize just what a profound moment that it was? And also, what did your family and friends say at the time, you know, turning your back on law to create something that has never existed before? Well, I had no experience whatsoever as an entrepreneur. I had no savings. I didn't have any technical ability. I had never worked in the consumer packaged goods or retail space. I didn't go to business school. I wasn't able to build a financial model. Uh, and so when I told my wife that even though I just made partner at this law firm and we had essentially a 10 year based position secured that I wanted to give that all up and take a five X pay cut to go and create a grocery focused mobile application, you might imagine <laughs> she thought it was a bit bonkers to begin with, uh, but she's a very loving woman and patient. And I think she thought he'll eventually talk himself out of it or more to the point, someone who really knows this industry will talk him out of it. So she encouraged me to go out to Silicon Valley and speak with potential investors, thinking I'm sure that uh, they would dissuade me or their lack of interest would be the end of it. Uh, but in fact, the people that I met on my first trip out there, to my great surprise, were very uh, surprised. You know, pop were very supportive and very willing to uh, write a check to as angel investors. And so one thing led to another, and pretty soon I found myself with three million dollars of seed stage capital. And I still had no team and no product, no prototype and no technical skills. I just had raised this money with a PowerPoint presentation. And then it came down to finding other people who really knew what they were doing and uh, coming up the learning curve myself on how to build a great consumer product. So at that point, iBotter was born and it's now gone on to become the biggest consumer tech company in Denver. And you work with eBay, Drizzly, Jet.com, Puma, literally every brand that you can think of, all to better engage consumers with their phone and get them back into physical stores like we mentioned earlier on in the show. But to date, you've also given users more than 225 million cash back. So that gamble certainly paid off. But just to help listeners understand how you're helping some of the world's biggest brands, are there any examples or indeed use cases? that you can actually share with us today? For sure. So we work with 1,200 consumer packaged goods brands, and most of them are trying to tell the story of their brand. We work with hundreds of other retailers, and they have a little bit of a different objective. When it comes to the, the you know, fast-moving consumer good companies, they're just looking to introduce you to a new format of product, a new flavor, a new type of yogurt, a new six-pack of Coca-Cola mini cans, and they want you to understand what's special about their brand but it's very hard to capture your attention. They can't put all that information on the label of the product. It's expensive to run television ads. People now are skipping through a lot of those ads. Uh, and so we are a unique place where people can uh, go and find a captive audience that's interested in actually learning about what they, they've made. And then you know they, they know that if people will try their product, they're much more likely to make it a routine part of their purchase. So what we've done is created what we call brand engagement or little bite-sized pieces of information, recipes, facts, videos that allow the brand to kind of reach out directly to that consumer. And they can target people who they know are buying their competitors' products. They can target people who they know are millennial moms who are potentially going to buy their product into the, uh, into the horizon in the future. And so that's our main value for them. For the retailer, it's as you said earlier, Neil, they're, you know, they're losing a lot of their market to online shopping. But the truth is that mobile influenced in-store sales is still around $4 trillion in the United States economy, which is 10 times larger than all of electronic commerce and online shopping. So the question is, how can technology be used to help people who are out and about uh, making sure that they come back to that store one more time every month? I'm giving them a reminder or an incentive to reach a certain uh, goal, spend a certain amount. So we stretch the basket sizes and the frequency of travel to those stores higher while also giving them a chance to have that same dialogue about what makes their brand or retail brand special. So with the digital transformation in this mobile first digital world being the topic of discussion in boardrooms all over the world at the moment, are you finding that more and more brands are knocking at your door? Absolutely. I mean, folks realize that the mobile commerce industry is doubling year over year. 
It will eclipse all desktop commerce uh, within the next two and a half years. And so and in China, it already represents 61 percent of commerce. So there's a lot of people realizing, gosh, we really have to have a strategy for telling our story where people are on their phones and tablets. And as a result, we work with essentially every major consumer packaged goods brand in the United States and almost every major online and offline retailer. Now, you also mentioned a few moments ago the problem that advertisers have got with people skipping their ads on TV now, and it's getting harder and harder to get in front of audiences. But this is also seeing the rise of the influencer. And I also noticed that you've got an influencer program um, over at iBotter as well. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? For sure. We find that performance marketing is really the most uh, exciting area of user acquisition and, and driving conversion to, to sale for our partners. And so we don't charge people uh, for display ads or for impressions or clicks. We charge them on a per unit sold performance basis. And that's the same way that our influencer program works in terms of growing our audience. So when we have uh, folks who make a referral to a friend or put up a piece of content and it leads to someone using our app, uh, we pay them. We share the proceeds of what that user is worth to us back with our influencers and we make it worth their while to tell the story of all the exciting uh, ways in which Ibotta saves people time and money. But we find that the overall trend in the industry is toward being able to really draw a clear line that attributes that traffic to the place that you were purchasing that ad uh, and away from kind of this, this sort of uh, unviewable programmatic media that I think has caused a, companies like Procter & Gamble to, to create a complete moratorium on display ads until there's a better way. And we represent one of those better ways. So for anyone listening that's really interested in what we're talking about here today, I mean, how do they sign up? And can you also talk them through that process of what will be waiting for them once they download the app? Yeah, absolutely. It's simple. You just go to the App Store or Play Store, search for Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, download the app. It's free. You create an account. It takes about 30 seconds. You put in your name, your email address, uh, your zip code. That's it. We don't need your credit card number. We don't need your, your personal details beyond that. And then you tell us a little bit about how you like to shop. Do you like to use Uber? Do you like to use Amazon? Or do you like to go to Walmart or Target? Or do you go to the local liquor store to buy uh, wine? And then we, we customize your feed so that you're going to see on the homepage a bunch of suggested shopping content that we think is relevant to you. And then the app gets smarter and smarter over time. So it makes it easier and easier for you. You know, one of the problems, Neil, is there's so many different apps. You, you don't have time to download them all and look at all the things that you might want to sell you. So we ingest all that data and put it in one single catalog of catalogs and represent a, a very easy and convenient way to find things you might want to buy uh, in the physical world or online. Is that only available in the States at the moment? And if it is, are there any plans to take it beyond the, uh, the States? We are actively working on plans to take it beyond the United States. Right now, it's only in the U.S. market. We, are, we represent the, uh, one of the top five most widely used shopping apps in the U.S., and there's still a lot of room to grow and evolve here. There's, there's a lot that we're excited about bringing, though, to the U.K., uh, Australia, Canada, but also to the East Asian countries. So we're working actively on that as you speak. Excellent. Because I've got to admit that whenever I see a promo code on a website checkout page, I then make it my personal mission to hunt down that promo code. But am I right in saying that I bought as that covered too? Well, we will we will find sales, promos, uh, surface content from within the catalog that we think is personally interesting to you. Uh, absolutely. One of the things we're trying to do is make it the most convenient starting point for all shopping on your phone. So where do most brands go wrong when it comes to rewarding their customers in your experience? They make three main mistakes, Neil. Number one, they try to build their own mobile app. And the, the reality is that very few apps live on your phone. So you don't want a separate app for every different place where you shop. And that's all the more challenging if you're a brand company like Coca-Cola. You, you probably don't have the Coca-Cola app on your phone, I would wager. Yeah. So they invest in their own uh, branded app instead of partnering where the eyeballs are. That's one mistake. A second challenge is that they uh, continue to prop up paper promotions uh, because they've done it for 130 years. And so they put uh, flyers in the newspapers and they pay for weekly circulars and of what they call freestanding inserts. And, you know, they spend billions of dollars on that. And the, the challenge is that that's not where the next generation of shoppers are forming purchase intent. So they're, they're, they're investing in a, in a dying channel. 
And then the third cha- the third problem that you see quite frequently is the the lack of a segmented approach that's driven by data. So they have a single offer for everyone uh, without understanding that you know different kinds of traffic are are worth different amounts of money. So if, if you're net new to a particular retail outlet, for example, and this is a very first time you're purchasing there, that's extremely valuable. Uh, if you are someone who goes there weekly, getting you to keep going there weekly has value, but it's not as valuable. So using your data, what we call your CRM, customer relation uh, management tools, to essentially understand in real time the different buckets that your shoppers fall into and the different elasticities of demand that they may have causes you to become much more sophisticated about your pricing and promotion strategies. Now, it does seem at the moment, though, that any solution or any platform must continuously improve and also continuously evolve. So I've got to ask, what's next for iBot? I appreciate there's probably not too much that you can share, but are there any teasers that you can share about what uh, is on the horizon for you guys? Well, we've always said there are three main ingredients in building an app that will be on the front screen of everyone's phone around the world. Number one a super clear value proposition, and in our case, it's earning cash rewards using a free app for everyday purchases. Number two, it's having an app that works across every conceivable context where you might want to buy something. And that, that is why now you can hail an Uber, you can download a song, you can book travel, you can uh, get your food delivered, as well as going for your groceries, uh, etc. restaurants. Uh, and then the third ingredient is high frequency of use. So we're really focused on areas where you can come back to Ibotta and start with Ibotta uh, all the time, whether that is hailing a ride, downloading a song, ordering food, going to a restaurant, going to the grocery store, versus exclusively focusing, as many others do, on high consideration but relatively infrequent purchases. Uh, so if I'm going to buy a kayak, I'm probably only going to do that every three or four years, if that. So uh, that continues to be our guiding strategy. And what that means is you'll see us um, broadening the array of contexts in which you can start with Ibotta. We'll be making it even easier to find personally relevant content on your home page. Uh, that's a really exciting um, trend. We'll be making it so our search is actually the best search out there. So you'll be able to search effectively the catalog of every place you might want to buy something all at once. Um, there are a number of other initiatives which we'll make more press announcements around in 2018, but we think really taking it from an app that people who are self-identifying as value-seeking coupon users and making it an app that people say, you know what, no matter what I'm buying, instead of starting with this other app or this other browser, I'm going to start with Ibotta and it'll save me time and money. Well, a big thank you for coming on the show today. I really appreciate what you do, especially because I'm a thrifty online shopper myself. So I really do hope it comes to the UK in the foreseeable future. Uh, But before I let you go, can you remind the listeners of your website and also how they can contact a member of your team if they have any questions about our conversation today? Absolutely. Our website is Ibotta, www.ibotta.com. You can find us in the App Store and Google Play if you're in the U.S., under Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A. And then as far as contacting uh, us about our, our, our um, offering or about this interview, you're welcome to contact our press team here or you're welcome to contact support at Ibotta.com. Or you can go online and on our website and file a, a query there and indicate what you're interested in learning more about, including doing business with Ibotta, or uh, you know, coming to work for Ibotta. Excellent. Well, like I said before, I think it's a fantastic story that you've got here. It really is inspirational, and I love how you followed your heart, and I think this story is just going to continuously evolve. So I wish you the best for the future, and really thank you for coming on and sharing your story today. Cheers, Neil. I appreciate it. I absolutely love stories like this, and it highlights the importance of following your heart and shows how inspiration can appear in the most unlikeliest of places or indeed moments. I mean, quitting law after he saw someone on an aeroplane taking pictures of business cards with a phone because it made him think that people would rather take pictures of shopping receipts to coupon after they buy something than the other way around. It's just a great example. As a result, iBotter was born and is now the biggest consumer tech company in Denver. And they work with eBay, Drizzly, Puma and literally every brand that you can possibly think of all to better engage with consumers with their phone and get them back into physical stores. And as a reminder there, to date they've given users more than $225 million all in cash back. I'm genuinely grateful that we've been able to share both Brian's and Ibotta's journey today. So a big thank you for Brian coming on. 
And I'm hopeful that we get iButter over here in the UK sooner rather than later too. But if you are a user of iButter in the States, I'd love to hear your feedback, your opinions, uh, your experiences and insights all using iButter and let me know what you think. And as always, you can do that by tweeting me at Neil C. Hughes or of course you can email me at techblogwriter at outlook.com. But I'm afraid we're at the end of another episode and it's time for me to go. So all that's left for me to say is thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.